Hello and welcome to the 141st episode of the GoGen podcast. I am GoGen, your hostess, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as GoGen. And while I'm thinking about it, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already to make sure that you're notified whenever I put out new content, which is basically every Sunday. And you don't want to miss it. See, I just heard you say, no, I don't want to miss it. And if you're a new viewer, thank you for trying me out. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Yay. How are y'all doing? Is it cold where you are? If it's not, you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Because everybody in the Northern Hemisphere is cold. Even people in Florida are cold because it's less than 75 degrees. <laughs> but anyway, here uh, we've had snow, icy rain, cold. We had one day that was absolutely gorgeous. And then it went back to rotten again. So anyway, have you been working on projects? I have been working as hard as I can go. Uh, I do have a job during the week that keeps me from crafting as much as I would like to. But other than that, I've been crafting. And today I want to talk to you about how I join blanket squares. So let me just jump right into that. One of my projects for my owl in the Harry Potter Knitting and Crochet House Cup which yes, it's a mouthful to say, is joining 80 blanket squares. This is the yarn I'm using to join with. Anyway, I have 80 squares, all made same pattern, which is called this uh, solid granny. It's just no holes. It's just double crochet straight across. And they're all made out of sock yarn. So when I started thinking about joining these to each other, not to me or anything, I thought, what do I want to do? How do I want to, ooh, I was about to lose my needle. Don't do that. Because if you lose your needle, you never find it. Um, I thought about the traditional way of joining squares into uh, rows and rows into columns. But this does not seem very efficient to me because if you, if you join down this seam, yeah, that's a good, efficient, long use of your yarn. But then you've got short row, another short row, another short row. And so you're having to cut your yarn, weave in that end, both ends, beginning and end of your row, same for every single one. That's not an efficient use of your time. I thought about crocheting the squares together and I have decided no, I'm just going to use a regular needle, a darning needle that I would normally use to weave in ends and I'm whip stitching the squares together. And where I can, I'm leaving a long tail that will be crocheted over when I either join these to other squares or put the uh, border on, go around with a border. So I thought and I thought and I thought and I thought of what would be an efficient way to join these squares. And here you go. This is my best way. Start in a corner, so this is my corner square, and then I join this red square, and I join this autumn color square, and I had three squares joined. Okay, that wasn't particularly long, but on my next go through, nice long piece of yarn, I started here, come up to here, join these two, 
Okay. This doesn't want to stay. I need one of those felt boards. Um, I started here and joined these two squares. Came through here. I joined this yellow square to the red. Came up here. Come across here to join it to the fall color square. Come across here and join this solid color square to the autumn square. And end it off there. So you see that I've joined one, two, three squares to the three that were already there. The next time through, I will come here. This one, I was watching a movie and I joined it at the wrong place. So it's not too good for illustration points. But I will come up, over, up, over, up, over. I'm going to put in a little diagram right here. that will hopefully let you see it's a diagonal line up and it joins new squares and it seams the other squares together maybe on a side they weren't already. I like this. I can put a long piece of yarn on the needle and just go. Um, and you are adding a lot of squares each time, but you don't have that many ends to weave in. You're not having to stop, start a new piece of yarn. So here we go, if I start here, I will jo I'll come join these two. Then I'll come across and join these two. Come up, join these two. And you're always joining two squares at a time. And I'm sorry about that. I was watching a movie and it was really good. It was down to the end and I was trying to figure out who done it. <laughs> sorry. But that to me is a um, very efficient way of using my time, my yarn, and 80 sock yarn <laughs> squares. <laughs> They're everywhere. I enjoyed making all those squares, but I really, you know, joining things together is the least, what is this? I have a, oh. so apparently I left that yarn tail alone, <laughs> but they all just have to be joined together and it is tedious. It is time consuming, but uh, at the end, I will have a nice big blanket to uh, enjoy. So, yay. That is my first owl project I wanted to tell you about. I wanted to also show you my granny squares. I'm making a granny square blanket as well as part of my owl. I have 15 jumbo squares. They're about a foot across. So they're like 12 inches by 12 inches. And to add interest, I am going to have five squares that I'm going to just um, put at different spots. I don't want them touching um, throughout the blanket that will add ver uh, visual interest. So instead of a blanket of big solid granny squares, then scattered throughout I will have four quarter squares. That makes me happy. This project is going to wait and be last because it is fast and easy to do. I think I will crochet this one together. I doubt that I'll whip stitch it because I can crochet um, in the same pattern as the granny squares, three double crochets in each loop and join it to this other square on the, on the other side like this. You just come down here with and join them on alternating stitches to be, it's like a strip of granny square treble crochet, double crochet, excuse me, um, in between the squares. And so that makes me happy. But like I say, that will be last um, because I, 
it's going to be time, the most time consuming to finish this blanket. And then it's going to be time consuming to finish my socks. And because I am bistitual and I knit and crochet, these are my knit socks. I am doing an afterthought heel. Do you see that stripe of pink in there? That's where the heel will go. I have about an eight inch cuff because these are for my sister and um, I'm, that's just what I did. Um, and my uh, tension was off right here. You can see that it kind of sinks in a little bit. That's because when I first started back knitting on these, these haven't been worked on since last March, I think. But at any rate, um, my tension was tighter and I've had to consciously make myself loosen up. I'm using double pointed needles. I'm not going to take them out because you know what double pointed needles look like. And so I'm going to, this is where the heel will be, if you will. It's going to be like that. And this is the foot. And so I've got um, about eight inches of foot to do. Then I will go back and put the heel in. That's the plan anyway. I've got a pattern and I think I can do it. And then I'll have to make the other sock. Um, I have figured out how much I have to do to finish my owl project by the end of March. The sock socks need three inches worked every week to get to the finish line. And this is right about three inches worth of sock. So three more inches and I should be to the toe. And I plan on doing the toes and heel out of black sock yarn. That's my plan. So that's my knitting. And I have to, like I said, I have to do three inches of sock every week. I think I figured I needed to work to join at least 10 squares together and that would get me the entire 80 joined so then I can excuse me bless me I had to sneeze um, that would give me the 80 joined and then time to do two borders even if they're just simple single crochet borders or might do a scallop or something very simple um, so that can be done the sock I need to finish the first sock by the end of February because that's part of my 50% goal. Okay, so let me see. Uh, my other project that I always forget is my crochet project, the virus shawl, which is just a very simple but beautiful pattern. I'm knitting, not knitting, I'm crocheting this out of some knit picks. Uh, Hawthorne fingering weight, and this is the colorway Turkish Delight. And uh, I had about 60% done at the 1st of January, so I'm trying to do 10% a week. I did this week do my 10%, and so that I get, um, I get the, this entire thing should be done by the end of January because I'm just trying to, it's easy, it's really potato chip crochet, but boy, isn't that beautiful. Oh, this is really pretty. I love this yarn. I'm kind of thinking this one might have to stay with me. I know. I love to give things away, but boy, this is beautiful. So that's my virus. I have socks my virus, the sock yarn blanket, and the granny square blanket. Those are my four projects for um, the Harry Potter knitting and crochet house cup that I need to finish by the end of March. Here in my bullet journal, this is where I was sketching out different patterns to try and figure out which would be the most efficient way to join my blankets. Um, 
when you have a bullet journal, if you're not using some kind of planner or something like that, I find that it's just so helpful. I write down questions that I'm asking myself. Um, what is the most efficient way to join those blanket squares? I've got 80 of them. I don't want to do any more work than I have to do. Uh, the Ravenclaw motto, because it is Harry Potter, excuse me, the Harry Potter motto is work smarter, not harder. And that is me all over. Um, I've been accused of being lazy. Yeah. But th I also want to find whatever way is going to help me do the most work with the least amount of effort on my part. Doing more than that, doing more work to get the same effect, what do we call that? I don't know. Mm, no idea. Okay, books. I wanted to just briefly mention. This is my books for the year in my bullet journal. I finished Par oh, no, I finished The Phantom by Joe Nesba. Loved it. That's my detective Harry Hola from Norway. I love him. I do. I wouldn't want to be around him. Golly, Pete, no, but I couldn't stand him. But I, I love reading about his exploits. Now I've started on Paradox Bound by Peter Kleins. I've read several books by him, and I love his style. Uh, very conversational. Just thrown in some extraordinarily crazy things. And how do normal people deal with stuff like that? That's I love that. That's my, one of my favorite things about Stephen King is that's what he does is he throws normal everyday people in to unreal extraordinary circumstances i'm also reading a kindle book called iq and the author's name is joe ide ide -E. i don't know if it's id or ide i finished the book before you leap by kenneth houghton i think that was one of the kindle first books uh, where you get a free book with Kindle Prime every month. Um, wasn't anything special. It was just a little th bit of a thriller, murder mystery, crazy book, crazy pants book. It was okay. I enjoyed it. A good solid B. Mm -hmm. But I'm loving IQ. Uh, it's like Sherlock Holmes in the hood. And uh, I, I just, I love following the thought processes of someone, even fictional characters, only fictional characters, who can really figure things out. So I am enjoying that. So if you are a new viewer, thank you for coming by. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I hope that you will subscribe, hit the little bell, and you will get an email reminder that uh, whenever I put out new content. If you're a returning viewer, thank you. I appreciate you coming back week after week uh, just to see what's up with me. And I, I just do appreciate that. I hope you're a subscriber. If not, everybody needs to like, thumbs up, and subscribe right down below. And until I see you next week and we have more exploits from the owl, I wish you nothing but love and laughter. <laughs>